In this second video on our series on OOP, we cover inheritance and overriding. So let's have a quick recap of OOP basics from the first video. Here is a class diagram for a generic light bulb object. Each light bulb object we instantiate or create from this class template will have four attributes wattage, color, type, and connection type. Every light bulb object we instantiate or create from this class template will have eight methods. If you want to recap the basics of object oriented programming, please go back and watch the previous video. Now, of course, not every light bulb is the same. Some will be highly specialized versions of our generic light bulb class template. The light bulbs will still share all the same attributes and methods, but may require additional attributes and methods in order to fully describe them. Luckily, OOP provides a mechanism for that, and it's called inheritance. Let's look at an example. The person class has two attributes, name and address. It's got four methods, get name, get address, and set name, set address. The person object is fine as it is, but it's very generic. With OOP, we can use inheritance to quickly and easily reuse the code from the person class and extend its attributes and methods without affecting the original code. Here is a more specific class called employee. The employee class inherits the same attributes and methods from the person class. So each employee is a person, so they will still need all the code from the person class to get and set their name and address attributes. However, the employee class will also need to store and output each person's national insurance number. We don't need to rewrite all the code. We simply define a new employee class that inherits the details of the person class and then adds the additional attributes and methods that are required. In this case, person would be referred to as the superclass of employee. On the other hand, employee would be referred to as the derived class or subclass of person. The employee object can access code in the form of methods to set and get its attributes. Two coming from employee and four inherited from person. Now let's say we want to extend the employee class one more time and create two additional subclasses of employee. One for hourly paid employees and one for salary paid employees. Can you suggest suitable attributes and methods for these two new subclasses? Pause the video. So did you get something similar to here? We added an extra attribute to each of the new subclasses. So in the case of the salaried employee, that was salary. And for the hourly paid employee, it was hourly rate. And we also added two new methods to each new subclass, allowing us to get and set the appropriate new attribute. Notice how each of these subclasses are still employees and indeed people. That means they'll inherit attributes and methods from all the way up the class tree. Once instantiated, an hourly paid employee object has four attributes and eight methods. Once instantiated, a salaried employee object also has four attributes and eight methods. Imagine a situation where a subclass needs a more detailed or specific version of a method that it's inherited from further up the class tree. Let's say a system outputs the name of a salaried or hourly paid employee and their name is prefixed with a capital letter and an underscore 
to donate which system they're on. E underscore for hourly paid and S underscore for salary paid. Well, we need the get name method inherited from the person class to be slightly more specific. We do this by using a method of the same name in the subclass that contains the more specific code relevant to that class. When this occurs, the method from the parent class is said to be overridden. Overriding occurs automatically when you call a method from an object that shares the same name as a method further up the class tree. The overriding method takes precedence and replaces the method from the superclass. Here we have instantiated a salaried employee object called employee4 and we have set the name attribute to Justin. However, we still want to output the getName method inherited from the superclass. We can do this also by using the super dot prefix. When using the super dot, overriding is ignored and the original method from the original superclass is used instead. Here is the original code for the person class. We can clearly see the two private attributes for person, name and address, and the four methods for the class. We want to create a more specific version of person called employee. We don't change any of the code related to the person class. We still need those attributes and methods. We only need to add the person's national insurance number and extra methods to handle this data. We create a new class just like we did before using the keyword class followed by the name of the new class employee. We then use the keyword inherits, followed by the name of the class it should inherit from. This line of code instantiates an object from the employee class. In this final example, we create yet another subclass for a salaried employee that inherits from the employee class, which of course itself is automatically set to inherit from the person class. This line of code instantiates an object from the employee class, passing in all the relevant attributes up the class hierarchy tree. If we call the dot get name method from the person5 object, it runs the method from the subclass. If we use super dot get name instead, it will use the method from the original person class. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is inheritance and how can it be used? And how can overriding be used in object-oriented programming?